Digital Realty Trust stock, ticker symbol DLR. This stock is down almost 8% on the year to date chart, while the overall market, in this case the S&P 500, is up 4%, so that's a big difference to start with. DLR missed on FFO and EPS, but beat on revenue. For the upcoming earnings, 5 out of 7 analysis are expecting a miss. From a dividend point of view, things look pretty interesting with dividend yields sitting at 5.3% and 17 years of dividend increases. But does this mean that DLR stock is a buy at current prices? Well, in this video I'm going to show you real quickly what DLR does. The most recent earnings report, the fundamental analysis, dividends, returns versus the S&P 500 and in the last part I'm giving you my price target to see if they are a buy or not. And I think you definitely want to see that part, so make sure to watch until the end. And I'm also very excited to see what you guys think about this stock, so please let me know your thoughts in the comments. My name is Thomas and this is Thomas Invest. I'm an investor looking for great stocks at great prices. So what does DLR do? Digital Realty owns, acquires, develops and operates data centers. The company is focused on providing data center co-location and interconnection solutions. Digital Realty reported revenues for the fourth quarter of 2022 of 1.2 billion, a 11% increase year over year, which looks pretty good to me. But the thing is, they reported a net loss income of 2 cents per share, compared to $3.71 last year, so something happened there. FFO is also down from $1.54 last year to $1.45 in the most recent quarter. For the full year they reported a 6.91 constant currency core FFO and they introduced a 2023 outlook of 6.65 to 6.75 core FFO, which is a decent drop from the 2022 result. So that's something to keep your eye on. But with dividends sitting at $4.88, the dividends are still very well covered, so this comforts me a lot. DLR has more than 4,000 customers and 300 data senders, which is quite impressive. The US represents 56% of their portfolio, and Europe is at 20%. United Kingdom is at 7%, and after that it drops significantly in amount of share. For the 2023 outlook they expect to increase their revenue significantly. EBITDA will also grow at decent numbers. Rental rates also looks pretty decent, but the thing that I don't like here is the portfolio occupancy. It's sitting at 85% right now and it's expected to stay at that level next year. You want this number around 95%, so it's not even close right now. The core FFFO also doesn't look that good with flat expectations, especially since revenue is growing a lot. For companies like DLR, there are a lot of growth potentials because it's expected that these industries will grow a lot such as cloud computing, modernization, streaming and e-commerce. These are of course very well known industries, but also some newer industries are expecting to grow a lot such as AI, Internet of Things, 5G tech and edge computing. In this sheet we see some interesting numbers compared to 2018. We see that it has grown from 214 properties in 2018 to 316 properties in 2022. The top 20 tenant concentration is nearly the same, and too high in my opinion. I would prefer a lower number here, but since it's decreasing, I think it will be fine over a longer period of time. Net debt to adjusted EBITDA is also a bit on the high side in my opinion. I prefer 6 or lower, so this is also not looking that great in my opinion. Especially since it's increasing over a longer period of time, which is something that I don't like of course. DLR is paying great dividends as well. And right now it's around 5%. And we see the payout ratio based on the AFFO is at 82%, which is a little bit above the 75% average for REITs, so that's something to keep in mind. But right now it doesn't worry me a lot. And now that we know more about the company, it's time to check some fundamentals of this stock. But first, if you made it this far into the video, I want to thank you a lot for watching this video. Make sure to join my Discord channel for free to meet other people within the community and to talk about stocks. It's completely free so don't miss it out. Let's continue with diving into the fundamentals. DLR is a 29 billion market cap company. 
PE ratio isn't a fair metric to use with REITs, so we are focusing on the price to FFO, which sits at almost 16, indicating that it could be undervalued based on this number. Later in this video I will show you my 3 price targets for DLR, so make sure to watch until the end. Because price to FFO is only telling a small part of the full story here. Revenue is at 4.69 billion, and in this graph we see that revenue went up in the long run. To me this looks pretty steady and consistent. Margins are going up and down quite a lot over a longer period of time. And most recently they took a big hit, so this worries me a bit for the future. Of course, and is definitely something to keep your eye on. EPS is also going up in the long run, but it's not really steady and consistent. But since this is a read, I'm not that worried about this number. Analysis expect EPS to increase at high numbers in the coming years. And as we saw in the earnings report, in 2023 it's expected to take a big hit. Revenue is expected to grow at low single digits, which kinda disappoints me, to be honest. After 2023, analysis expect to see flat numbers in revenue growth. Return on assets is sitting at 4%, which is below my 10% minimum, and it's the same story with the return on equity. The most important number, return on invested capital, is sitting at 1.2%, which is a really low number, and the fact that it's lower than the 5 year average also worries me a bit. Current ratio is at 0.5, which is very nice, since it's below the 1.5 mark that I prefer. So this looks also quite good. Historically it also looks pretty good to me. Total debt is sitting at 18 billion, and I prefer companies that can pay down at least a third of the total debt with the total cash position. Right now total cash is sitting at 141 million, so this doesn't look that good. However, keep in mind that REITs issue a lot of new debt to grow the business. Nevertheless, it's still very important that free cash flow is growing, since this is used to pay down debt of course, but also to buy back shares, pay dividends and open new locations. And in here we see that free cash flow is going up in the long run. It also grew at a steady and consistent pace for a REIT. But most recently it took a big hit. Another thing that's interesting are the shares outstanding. It's going up quite a lot in the long run. Usually this is not a good sign, but REITs issue new shares to raise capital and grow the business of course. But when shares outstanding are decreasing, it increases your ownership in the company, increases the EPS, lowers the PE ratio and makes it easier to maintain and increase the dividends. And since we're talking about dividends anyway, dividend yield is sitting at 5.3%, which is a really good number. Annual payout is at $4.88 and the payout ratio is at 82% as we saw earlier in this video, and not the 428% displayed here. This is because REITs use FFO to pay out the dividends. The 5 year growth rate is at 5%, which is a decent number for a REIT, especially since the dividend yield is already at 5.3%. On top of that, they grew their dividends for 17 years in a row, which is also very impressive. Overall, a great looking dividend scorecard, but how about the historical returns? I decided to compare DLR stock with the overall market, in this case the S&P 500. Next to that I added a competitor, which is EQIX. On the 5 year chart we see that DLR returned only 7% including dividends, underperforming the S&P 500 big time, which returned 58%. EQIX also did great with 80% return. On the 1 year chart it looks pretty interesting, with DLR returning minus 30%, which is of course a big drop. The S&P 500 returned minus 11% and EQIX did best with only minus 6%. And it's pretty much the same story on the 6 month chart. DLR had the lowest returns, while EQIX again did beat the S&P 500 and DLR. On the 1 month chart we see that DLR had a minus 12% return, while the S&P 500 did best with only minus 1% return. So bottom line, DLR underperformed the most important competitor, but also the S&P 500 by a big margin. But how about some fundamentals compared to EQIX? We see that there is a big difference in terms of market cap, enterprise value and employees. Both companies have a really high PE ratio. But to me that's not that interesting, since these are REITs. Price to free cash flow is significantly lower at DLR, which is very nice. Revenue growth year over year is the highest at EQIX, but the 5 year compound annual growth rate is higher at DLR, which is very interesting. 
net income compound annual growth rate is the highest at EQIX, and DLR has a negative number here, which does really hurt to see. Last but not least is the free cash flow compound annual growth rate, it's sitting at almost 23% for DLR, which is an insane number. EQIX is slightly lower, but still looking really good. DLR has the highest gross profit margin, but not the highest net income margin. Return on equity, return on assets and return on total capital are way higher at EQIX. Both companies have quite some debt, but EQIX is looking a little bit better here. The last thing that I want to check are the dividends. Dividend yield is the highest at DLR, which beats EQIX big time. But the dividend growth number is way higher at EQIX, which is also very interesting. DLR has the most consecutive years of dividend increases. Earlier in this video we saw that DLR had a 82% payout ratio, and not the 428% displayed here. EQIX is at roughly 52%, so they are doing a better job here. Overall I think EQIX looks like the better company based on these historical numbers. But how about the future? Is DLR stock a buy at current prices? Well, let's check the three price targets that are created using the Everything Money software, which is one of the best tools out there. I'm using a low, mid and high assumption to get the three price targets, starting off with revenue growth. For the revenue growth I'm filling in 10%, 12% and 14%, since I think they will increase the revenue at the same numbers versus the historical averages. Next to that it's also based on the analysis expectations and the current outlook. Profit margin I'm filling in 8%, 10% and 12%. And for the free cash flow margin I'm filling in 34, 36 and 38. Since this is a read I don't pay attention to the PE ratio, but I will fill in 20 since we have to fill it in. For the price to free cash flow I'm filling in 14, 15 and 16. My desired annual return is 15% since I want to build in a higher margin of safety. Usually I fill in 12.5% since I can get an easy 10% average annual return with owning an ETF. Right now DLR is at $94. I hit analyze and we see a lot of green numbers. We have a low price target of $87 and again I'm only focusing on the discounted cash flow value and not the PE ratio. We have a mid price target of $110 and we have a high price target of $139. To me the low to mid price target is the most justified here, so that means a range of $87 to $110. My final conclusion on this stock is that revenue is likely to grow based on what we saw, but not all other fundamentals and outlooks are looking that great in my opinion. Not that long ago I was pretty interested in this company, but based on how it's performing right now I'm losing my attention to this stock. I do think it has still a lot of potential, but the lack of growth in FFFO and high net to debt to EBITDA does concern me a little bit. In the long run I think they will do fine and right now it doesn't seem overvalued or anything. But on the other hand I do think there are better deals out there right now. For now I'm skipping this stock, but I will keep an eye on them and every now and then I will analyze this company to see if fundamentals have changed. And remember to always do your own research and never fully trust on what I or other YouTubers say about a stock. I'm not a financial advisor and this content is just for entertaining purposes only. I hope you liked this video and I did bring some insights of this company to you. I would really appreciate a thumbs up and make sure to subscribe to get notified when I'm posting a new video. Thanks for watching and I will see you in my next video.